Hi, welcome back. We are cloning Pop the Luck game and in the last episode we were kind of stuck at the dot spawning issue. So let's see where we are right now. So our load same level is working fine and the level clear is also okay. But the dot spawning is not okay. So let's try to drop the dot prefab again. So we always have at least one dot when the game begins. And this spawn issue seems much harder than I expected. You know what, let's work on something different. We'll come back to this dot issue later with a fresh perspective. And meanwhile, let's make the tap hint text that's shown in the first level of the original game. So I'll duplicate this level text here and call this hint text. And I'll position this at the bottom, just below the lock. And let's change the text to tap and maybe make it a bit bigger. Let's remove this level text UI and instead let's add a new component called hint text UI. And I'll move this script to our UI system folder. And as always, uh, this script will be similar to the level text UI. So let's just copy the code here and change the class name. And we don't need this update. We just need the start. So this tap hint is only shown in the first level. So let's add a check if the current level in game data is not one, then we just set this game object to inactive. And that is it. Let's remove the redundant imports. And you know what? I'll just also clean up the other UI classes. And now we can drop the game data here. And I think this default game data asset can be just renamed to default. It seems simpler. And yeah, so this tab is shown if the current level is one, but you can see that the text is still there, even if we clear to the next level. So I think I'll have to add the update method and do this logic inside. And if the current level is not one, we just disable the game object. And yeah, now we don't need this start method anymore. Now the issue is fixed and we can see that the hint text is there in the first level and it just hides in the later levels. Okay, so now let's look into the spawning issue. This, this seems weird that sometimes two duplicate dots are getting spawned. So let's check our dot spawner. What if we find existing dot using find object with dot tag? And in the spawn that will be destroyed if it's not null. So let's add a new tag called dot and add this tag to our dot object. Uh, let's test. Still having the same issue. Is it because of the frame? Let's try to use destroy immediate. Nope, still having the same issue. Okay, what if I find the active dot before spawning the first one? and I think destroy immediate was not the issue. So let's just set it back to destroy. So the duplicate dot issue is fixed, but if I reset the data and play again, the first dot is getting destroyed. And I think that's because of the code that we just added. Okay, I'm just gonna add a check here that if the game data current level is greater than one, only then destroy the dot. And yeah, that fixes the issue. Our dot isn't destroyed anymore. Okay, let's try to think about this issue. Uh, so when I clear a level, the new level doesn't spawn any dot. Let's try to debug this. So the dot seems to not spawn when I clear the level, but if I manually raise my event, it works fine. You'll notice that if I raise my load level event, the dot is spawning properly. Or if I raise the load next level, the dots are spawned just fine. So that means there's nothing wrong on the response side of the events. Hmm. But if I raise the dots code and eventually the level is cleared, we are not getting the spawn. And if I add a debug log for the dots remaining, the, uh, these, the dots remaining are logged. And it seems that there is some counting issue. The dots remaining seems to be zero, even when it's a new level. So let's dig deeper. Let's debug log something inside the event class. I see why this is happening. There is some race condition going on. You might see that even after the dot scored event is raised, the dots remaining count is still the same. And when we go to the next level, the dots remaining is still not updated. So it's causing this issue. So what we can do here is let's open our dot detector class. And here where we are raising the dot scored event, just before that, we'll manually decrease the remaining dot count. And we'll also reset the data. And also, uh, now we need to remove this decrement dot handler from the game manager because we are handling that in the dot detector So we don't need that anymore and if we play now you can see something is broken uh, There is no win event raised and the game doesn't progress 
and that's because our win event was being raised in the decrement dot method which is no longer being called so let's try to move this logic out of here and maybe cut paste this in the update method so if the dots are zero raise the event but you know what this will cause issue because it will raise event every single frame so instead of this let's cut this from here and paste it in our dot detector script so if the dots remaining is zero we raise the win event otherwise we just raise the dot scored event and we need to create the on win event variable and one more thing i noticed is that this load level thing is really clunky we can remove this increment logic from here and just remove the boolean and do this logic here in the dot detector. I know it's not the cleanest code, but let's make it work first and then we'll make it right. So if we win, we increment the current level here and then raise the win event. So basically we don't need to have any concept of load next level anymore. And we'll remove the debug logs. And also don't forget to drop the level cleared event in the on win event variable. And in the game manager, we need to fix these broken event responses now. And since there is no concept of load next level anymore, we can remove this extra listener. Everything seems okay. Oh yeah, I remember I was raising events in my animation. So I'll have to go back to my win animation and I'm calling this raise method with int. But now we don't need that. So I'll just go to this event invoker class and remove this array and make it only take one event and just raise that. Now we just drop our load level event and we also were listening for the next level in our camera, which we don't need. So let's just remove this next load level event and just use our load level and also remove this next level event from the paddle. I think now no one is referencing this load next level event. So we can just remove this, uh, maybe just check quickly. And yeah, the dot spawner had a reference and we fixed that. And also manager has that missing so fix that as well let's play now okay so the last dot is not spawning is it because of the active dot thing let's check our spawn code let me just set this instead of active dot to our temp variable geo and i'm just gonna increase the paddle speed as it seems really slow now when i play i still have the issue that the last dot is not being spawned let's try to remove this destroy logic and move it in the start because uh, we'll only have the duplicate issue in the beginning, not the end of the level, I think. And I think now it makes more sense to rename this to first start because that's what we are checking for. Let's test. No, still not fixed. But if I try to raise the dot scored event manually, you can see that the final dot is not getting spawned. That means there's something wrong with the response itself. So let's try to set this check to greater than zero, now one. And yeah, now we have the last spawn, but the next level dot is not spawning. Now that I think about it, we are only spawning at correct moments, so we can remove this check completely. Now we have all the dots spawned and even after the next level. Let's reset and play from the start. Uh, there seems to be some duplicate dot bug on level two. I think that's because of the existing dot prefab that's already in the scene. To make this simpler, let's just remove this whole duplicate check logic and this first dot stuff. And in the project, we'll just remove this dot object because we are already spawning one dot in the start. Now it seems that there aren't any duplicates uh, during the level, but if we lose, we still have the issue. <laughs> I have started to think that this approach of using events for spawning was a bad idea. But yeah, anyway, let me do the destroy logic once more and I'll find the dot with tag and try to destroy it. And the spawn is a bit too close to the paddle. So let's increase the random angle value. And there's also this weird issue that the paddle starts in the opposite direction in the new level. And we still have this issue. I'll refactor this logic down in a new, new method called remove duplicates. And since we are having multiple objects, let's use find objects with tag. And then for each item in array, we'll just call the destroy method. Let's test this fix. Also, don't forget to add the dot tag on our dot prefab. Now on lose events, I'm not getting any duplicates, hopefully. Now, as for the dot spawning in the opposite direction issue, the reason for that is I think 
Uh, when the load level event is raised, the dot is spawned before the paddle could reset its position. This is a race condition and this is one of the side effects of using an event design for your games. So the way to fix this is to have a new event that's raised when the paddle resets. And instead of spawning the dot on load level, we spawn the dot when the paddle has reset. And we can simply raise this event inside the anchored motor when we reset the paddle's position. And we also define this on paddle reset as a variable. Here you can see that on the next level, the dots are spawned in the correct direction. So everything seems to be working now. Okay, we are getting closer to the end. I think we have almost covered 90% of the stuff in the game. Let's now tackle one of the last features of the game. And that is if the paddle crosses the dot without tapping, then we should lose and it should show game over. So uh, we need to raise the lose event. And here you can see that even when we cross the dot, uh, the paddle just keeps on going. And the implementation is quite easy, I think. So in our dot detector script, we'll add a new variable called last entered dot. And when we exit the dots trigger, we set the last entered dot to this dot. And then inside my update, I'll, oh, let me first move this game is running logic above since this will be common. And I'll move this inside. And now here we want to find the distance between the last entered dot and the current parallel position. And if it's greater than some lose value, then we just raise the dot missed event. The accurate way to measure this would be to calculate the arc distance since we are moving around in a circle. But because I'm lazy and I just want to implement this easily, I'm just using the straight distance. So I'll create a new method called get distance from last dot. And also if the last enter dot is not null and this distance value is greater than some cross threshold, let's just call it loose threshold we'll raise the on dot missed event. And let's define this method below. For now, let's just return some dummy value and let's also define this loose threshold value as an integer, say, uh, maybe five. And this should return an integer, not booleans uh, here. Uh, and here we calculate the distance between the transform position and the last entered dot position. And I'll just return the magnitude of the vector. And this is returning a float. So let's just make this return a float instead and make our loose threshold a float as well. And I'm just gonna debug this value so I can see what loose threshold would fit the best. Here it seems to be around 0.5. So let's change the default value and also set the value to about 0.1 and see if it's good enough. And yeah, when the parallel crosses without tapping, we lose and the distance could be increased maybe a bit more. Uh, yeah, this looks fine. Okay, let's do a test play. Yeah, the game is in a working state now. Okay, I think we have finished almost 90, 92% of the game. Uh, so maybe the next episode would be the last one. In the next episode, I guess we have to just polish a few things and maybe add some dynamic difficulty and just uh, add some cool animations and those sort of things. Let's take a break here again and um, hopefully in the next episode we'll be able to finish this game. Uh, if you guys have any questions, any feedback, please let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.